All right, folks, it's Demos Day at Matrix Towers. It is Matrix Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have three demos today. Keegan is going to tell, show you, not just tell you, he's going to show you uh, what's going on with Sync V3. Andy, in his Matrix Live debut, is going to talk about the new high contrast theme for Element Web. And Matrix Live stalwart Bruno is going to show us de device dehydration in hydrogen. Um, All right. Andy, your Matrix Live debut. Have you, are you out there? Hello. Yes, I am out here. Um, I am going to try and share my screen. You can see it. Yeah, so um, I've been doing a bit of work on um, making uh, the Element app easier to use for people who prefer uh, high contrast or who need high contrast to be able to see, see it well. Um, so I've been implementing a theme uh, that has higher contrast, which was designed by Gale, which uh, looks excellent. So in, the, in your settings, you can tick this box and use the high contrast theme, um, which basically shows um, um, darker text on the, on the light background. Quite a few of the colors have changed, um, stuff like that. Um, and really, that's pretty much all I want to show you, apart from one other thing, exciting thing that I discovered. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, this is only, it's only place, applies to the light theme. I'm not aware of any other plans, but um, if you're happy using the light theme, you can choose high contrast. Um, and also, and we already have the feature that you can match the, system, the system's favored theme. But, but what I've managed to do is um, get that to work even when you choose a high contrast system theme. It did work. Um, you can see that when I chose the high contrast theme there, my um, element web changed to a high contrast theme there. Um, uh, but in order for that to work in Firefox, you have to set um, this setting, layout CSS prefers contrast enabled to true because Firefox is still experimenting with giving you access to that system setting. And that is all I have for you. Amazing. Okay. Okay. And this and is, is available, well, it's on develop right now? Yeah, it, it's on develop um, as of a couple of days ago, yeah. Very nice, very nice. All right, any questions for Andy? I'm sure a lot of people will be super happy to have it eventually. Thank you. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it does yeah. Feel nice. All right, Bruno. Um, Hello. Give, make sure you get, give everyone a little bit of a run up and what device what? dehydration is and why you'd want it. Yes, I was planning on, on that. Uh, let me first share my screen. Hello, everyone. Um, there we go. So you should be able to see hydrogen now. Um, can you confirm that you can see it? Oh, yes. Cool. All right. So um, uh, this week, I've been implementing device heat dehydration in hydrogen. Um, and uh, uh, in the UI, this surfaces as a little checkbox here when you enable your session backup. And there's a link here to more info, which links to the MSC. Device dehydration is still something experimental, and it it, it aims to um, to close one of the gaps uh, where you can end up with uh, undecryptable messages. Um, in the case where you're logged out of all your devices, end-to-end -end encryption, the word itself says end-to-end -end. so you need two ends to encrypt to encrypt two and if you're logged out of all the, all of your devices you don't have an end anymore so what um, this msc proposes is to sort of create an artificial device that is not um really synced by any client um but that still has an end-to-end an, an -end identity and one-time keys that can be claimed um and so on so uh, other clients can encrypt for this device and then you can log in and claim that the device really adopt its device ID and its E2A identity, so you will receive all the two device messages for that device. I hope that made sense. Um, sort of that's, that's um, yeah, that's what this is about. So um, I'm gonna enable my uh, uh, secret storage, which will enable session backup here. 
Um, let me just copy the key and I'm going to check this box. So it's doing its thing. Um, this takes a few seconds, right? You see session backup is enabled, like there has always been in, in, in hydrogen. Um, but it also says this thing now, there was a dehydrated device ID created, a dehydrated device rather created with this uh, device ID and you can use it in your next login. So if I log out now, um, Log out. There we go. Um, and here I have, um, uh, so I'm logged out of that session. Here I have a, um, a another client of, on the same user syncing. So you can type messages here. And um, if I didn't do anything, um, so this client for um, Clarity is not the backing up to session backup. So all the keys that I'm sending here won't be backed up. So um, this is a message sent while the while hydrogen is logged out. So um, if I go back here now and I sign in, um, Test user, I get this question. Um, do you want to restore your encrypted history? And this needs to be done at logout because um, you need to you need to claim that dehydrated device at at um, at login at login rather. Yeah. So here I see the same device ID. I put in my key. It's good to go. I press continue, um, and I will do all the things. And um, the end goal here is that I can drip, decrypt the messages that were just sent from uh, from Element, as you saw. And as you see, they can. Um, so, yeah, that's device heat dehydration. Um, this is all running from my laptop now. I hope to do a release today where this will be included. Uh, one or two, two things missing, really, uh, that I still want to do is that um, the key for encrypting the dehydrated device is the same as for your secret storage. So the idea is when you do enter it at login, that we will automatically uh, enable session backup as well, which hasn't happened here yet. Um, and also that when you claim a device at login, that you will uh, put a new one up for in case you get logged out or something, so that you don't miss messages. But it, it's almost there. Um, I hope to release it today. And uh, yeah, that's it. Any questions? Are you cool. taking a slight security hit by potentially allowing the home server to decrypt these messages? Uh, the home server won't decrypt the messages. Um, it's basically the same. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe uh, it's basically, as I understand it, the same risk as uh, session backup, where um, the the um, uh, the keys will end up on the server, but encrypted with strong encryption. Um, and this is already what we do for session backup. Now we just also do it for your identity private key um, rather than your MegaOM sessions before. Um, but um, yeah, the MEC is, is linked to from the app. Uh, this is still experimental. Uh, it's all using unstable prefixes. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Hubert worked on the MSC. My understanding is that it's not really a, any significant security uh, risk, additional security risk, but um, yeah, feel free to read the MSC or um, yeah. Right, I was forgetting that you didn't just need your login and password, you also need your security key to actually get in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Keys. Yep. Great. Amazing, thank you, Bruno. Cool. Thanks, Bruno. Cool. All right. Um, so I think we've got a, a Keegan ready to give Sync V3 a shot. Hello, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Can you see me? I can hear you. Uh, okay. I can, and, and I can see you. And if I share my screen, does this now work? Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, great. So just a little bit of context. Um, Sync V3 is a, a next way, a next generation way of doing uh, slash sync. So if you've ever gone to bed and looked at Matrix, the next day or the next week, and it takes a while to load, um, that's because uh, of sync. And the syncing time is takes quite a long time for a multitude of reasons. 
Um, and the work that I've been focusing on with SyncV3 is to try to make this a lot faster and a lot snappier. And um, one of the ways that I've been testing this is by using an anonymous account on a um, Synapse server, which I'm running locally, which has got 2,000 rooms and lots of realistic looking data. So what you'll see is going to be that account full of anonymous users and things like that. Um, I've got a little test jig set up here, just a very bare bones read only client, uh, but this is using the new sync APIs. Um, so it should hopefully be very, very snappy. So if I start the sync, um, you can see this is all, all the rooms loaded. Um, it uses a sliding window. Um, so you can click on any room, you can see kind of history and things like that. And if I scroll, you can see there's these little placeholders which then get filled in um, because it's a sliding window. So it's only showing you, it's only downloading the information necessary to view that portion of the screen. And you can see these kind of operations down here, invalidating certain windows, syncing various bits. And this would obviously live update um, when there's traffic, but because I'm using an anonymous account, uh, there's no traffic on this system at the moment. Um, and that's basically about it. Um, it's, it's a lot faster than, you know, if you were to do this using a normal matrix account, um, using the normal sync APIs, it would take um, five to 10 minutes to load this account. And this loaded in, you know, less than five seconds and is otherwise perfectly usable, um, which is the intention behind all this work. That's it. The, the really cool thing, at least from my perspective, is if you were to 10x the size of this account, I know it's already a large one, um, that doesn't that won't impact the speed with which you get that initial uh, sync and the client can um, present data, which then opens up all sorts of different um, um, you know, architectural options to us in terms of how we use rooms as a data structure. Yeah, so that that is the intention here as well. Is that um, obviously it will scale slightly? The time will take slightly longer on on the server, you know, because fundamentally, if there's more data to sort through, it is going to take fractionally longer. But it will scale a lot better with the number of rooms. And in terms of the amount of data that's sent back to the client, that will be independent of the number of rooms. Yes. And so, and so what's next? Right? You've you've you've, you've proven. You, you know, you've, you've, you've got a working implementation to sort of prove the ideas. Um, what are we, what should we expect over the coming weeks and months? Um, so there's a whole bunch of um, issues that this kind of way of syncing data from the server to the client kind of introduces. Um, so various you know, clients may want to sort in specific ways. Um, so adding support for those specific uh, ways is going to be quite important. How do you handle end-to-end uh, -end encrypted rooms? How do you handle notifications in rooms which are not in that sliding window? And yep. things like that. So there's a whole bunch of, of um, like surrounding issues. Um, and that's the stuff I'll be working on over the next couple of weeks, trying to iron out those issues. And I think we want to start getting some clients, potentially hydrogen, uh, to actually start talking SYNC v3 and as well as getting an MSC out as well, uh, just to try to dog food it some more and get more, more eyeballs on it. At the moment, it's just trying to see, can this style of syncing work at all? And it seems to be, yes, it can. Yeah, very nice, super cool. Very impressive. Any, any questions for Keegan on that? I kind of abused the chair a little bit there, but um, any, any questions of, uh, from, the, um, from anyone else on the call? Very, very cool to see it in action. All right. In that case, um, thank you very much for joining Matrix Live this week. We'll see you all next week.